What is up guys and happy new year as this is the first installment of our lounging with lead sessions for 2021. And so for our first session this year, I have none other by special request, mind you, my favorite daughter, also known as my only daughter, my Shari. So my Shari is going to be joining Lounging with Lee today to discuss. She's a recent college grad um, to discuss being raised by a hard parent. I don't know where that term came from, nor do I care. Um, and just to discuss where, um, how the pandemic affected her um, as she was in her last year of college and what are her plans for the future. All right, so make sure to like and subscribe this channel, guys, and welcome to Lounging with Leet. All right, guys, so joining me today, I have none other than my Shari. Who is... <laughs> It's me. I don't know how this is gonna go. Okay, so y'all just, you know, y'all just, y'all just here for the ride. Okay, cause Shari is me. Okay, so we're gonna see. So Shari, yes. First thing, um, how do you feel being raised by a quote unquote no, hard? Unquote. No quote. No unquote. It's just period. Yeah, period. Raised <laughs> by a. Because where's this term hard parent coming from? That's my whole thing. That's the issue I'm having currently. Like, I don't know what that term is about. But anyway, how was it for you growing up with a hard parent? Well, let's get down to it, psycho. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. Growing up, of course, you're a child and you're like, I hate my mom. Da, 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 da. I don't want to be here. She's too much. And me looking at everything else my friends got to do, like they got to have sleepovers, go to sleepovers. Oh, it's me. Shari got her phone taken. <laughs> Shari's on punishment. Okay, well, hold up. Let's pause because... Why was your phone taken? Why were you on punishment? But let's get back to that. You, because... You, no, 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 no. I just wanted to inject that. Because being on punishment is a cause and effect. But you keep talking about... Go ahead. I used to think that her rules were absurd. And <laughs> I didn't want to listen. Because it's like, I'm just a young girl. Why can't I have guy friends? Why can't I talk to guys on the phone if I want to? She says to stop me from getting pregnant, which now <laughs> she said, I had to get you out of high school. No babies. Now check two. I got you out of college. No babies. <laughs> so now as I'm older, I am grateful for the strictness and the harshness because it's like, hmm, when I think about it, how would my life be if. <laughs> I could do whatever I wanted and not listen anyway. Well, I'm not gonna lie, y'all didn't listen, but I never got which away. Is, which I never is got what, away with it. <laughs> which is where the punishments and the phone taking came into play. Okay. I, I just thought she was cra I just thought she was crazy. Like <laughs> I really thought she was crazy. Like she was really crazy. I couldn't. I felt like I couldn't live my life the way I wanted to, being young, just being out here. But like they say, parents know best, right? <laughs> For any young viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you feel now? Now that you are 22, um, how, where is my parenting now? As opposed to when we were in the trenches. When I was trying to make you <laughs> a successful person, I wanted to make sure, like I said, get out of high school, no babies, get out of college, no babies. Um, how do you feel? And, and guys, listen, the reason why I'm like that is because my mom had me at 16. My mom had me at 16. Um, but I mean, her and my dad, they went on to have 
a total of three children. They eventually got married, um, but and they eventually got divorced. Okay, <laughs> so but you know they had their family, but my mom was definitely young. She was sixteen, and I had Shari at twenty. That's still too young, right? I had Shari exactly. Mm -hmm. I had Shari at twenty. When I was in college, and I had to take a break from college for some years um, before I completed my college studies, which is why I'm the way that I am with my children. Because when you have children young, you give yourself no room to know who you are. Y'all see me? I'm 43 now. Just now discovering what brings me joy, what am I passionate about, you know, but Shari got her, she, check, 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 <laughs> Shari got herself together, okay, so I just wanted to plug that real quick, because I am in no way, you know, um, degrading or anything like that, people that have to, I'm not doing that, because I also am happy that I had my children young, because now, I couldn't imagine being 43 trying to raise some child. I, I just, <laughs> for why? Why? I, I just can't imagine it. Really? So, um, um, so I'm happy, you know, that I did what I did, but I definitely know there are other ways to do things. And so the other ways to do things is how I raise my children. So back to you with how I said, how was your life? Now, as a 22-year-old college graduate, have a job, mm -hmm. have a license, drives, talk about the hard parent now. <laughs> well, yes, when I got older, I realized, well, when my mom started explaining things to me, I realized her life was very hard. <laughs> and she didn't want mine or my brothers to be like that. And me being me, stubborn, hard-headed, and I'm pretty, so I feel like she had to be that way with me, or it was I was going for the hills. It was, yeah, <laughs> I was going to be running a, for the hills. It was in a child running around here calling me grandma. <laughs> not today. No grandma leave so, today. <laughs> now that I'm 22, there's no parenting. The parenting is done. <laughs> It's done, honestly. The most she do is just encourage us. Encourage me, encourage us, because I'm young and it's hard. It's hard being a young adult. And although I may live in my mother's house, that's all I get, a roof. That's it. <laughs> and a free car to drive. Talk about, let the but people But the know. other stuff is hard. The other stuff is hard. Oh, and don't I'm just... forget, that free car, free room and board, because you don't pay rent. Don't... I said that. I had a roof over my head and a free car. Yeah, I just want the people you to know. You just wanted to elaborate yeah, I want so the, I bad. Need them to know. <laughs> this is my Rent time. Free. <laughs> <laughs> this is my time. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, yeah, it's just encouragement and pushing me to be the best that I can be because I can very much so get into my stages of not knowing. And I'm just like, what's next? And it's like, my life is different because I don't have no, I don't have no um, kids stopping me from doing nothing. So I just be having to remember that. And yeah. That's a great segue for us to talk about your life now. So how has the, how did the pandemic affect <laughs> your mm. <clears throat> college your last year being a senior at college hardcore depressing okay like <laughs> listen here for those who don't know me i am very i was very active in my school life i was in five different organizations i went to the university of maryland eastern shore i was in five different organizations one being a president of a major organization on campus being the queen of my major those are two top things that kept me occupied. So for that to be, a, and it was my last semester senior year, everybody who went to college know that's turn up time. You 
you doing your work, you trying to get out of here while trying to turn up and enjoy your last semester before you got to go into this adulthood, which I should have appreciated childhood more because <laughs> this ain't it. <laughs> this ain't it without proper guidance. <laughs> but <laughs> that, that, me staying busy that often and then it just being taken away literally in the blink of an eye, like it all happened so fast, like we was all in school. So we was all in school about to go on spring break. And out of nowhere, the same week, they telling us, yeah, spring break, end of the semester. What? What? Me, I was the president of the Campus Activities Board, meaning we have a big major event in the spring called Spring Fest. It's like homecoming for the spring. What? You mean to tell me I, can know I can't put on my last shebang of the semester being a senior? Mm -mm. It didn't hit me. It didn't hit me until graduation. That's, I mean, because I my mind was still busy because we, we was at home, but I was still in school. I still had to do schoolwork. All the projects I had to get done. My mind wasn't on the negative aspect of the pandemic. But when it was all said and done and it was over, it hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> Let me tell you, because being in a pandemic, a fresh out of college, not knowing what you're going to do next, or especially in my field, I want to be a home stager, have my own company and stuff. That's not really something that I can just be out here doing. Well, gratefully, I am now doing it with, you know, safety precautions. But on a regular, it's not something that you can just be doing and just be out here while it's a whole virus going around so um so yeah that was just a lot for me to take in and i was like in a real bad real bad place but my mother of course she said no 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 no. after a week we're not doing this no more we're not no 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 no, no. this is not what you're gonna do you're gonna grab this bible you're gonna <laughs> read these scriptures you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna find what makes you happy you're gonna implement it so <laughs> that is, she don't play that depression like she will not she she gonna let you feel it she trust me she'll let you feel it but if you're feeling it too long <laughs> don't feel it too long because then you're really not gonna hear what she want to say because like in your mind you want to be left alone but it's like okay you do need that, you know, extra push to get you out of your, out of your, you know, sad. There's an expiration date on <laughs> depression, okay? And she didn't want me to expire. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's when I, you know, it's, I took that. It still took me a little time to snap out of it, but it probably only took me like two, three days. And I'm like, all right, that's what I'm going to do. Like, so I started my business, Cost of Day Plush. <clears throat> Anybody who need a home read design. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's when I started my business. But, you know, if you do have any young viewers, what I say is don't give up. And pray. Uh, hello? Pray. Um, I don't be trying to, you know, force nothing on nobody. But I'm telling you, it works. It, it definitely works because. But I have to still. It still works because I'm still young and I'm still a little stubborn and a little hard-headed. So, I have to, you know, still develop that strong relationship so I know that I'm going to be hard in the end. And that's what I realized. Once you have faith, it's, it's no stress. Hey, man, you better, <laughs> preach, you better preach 22 years old. <laughs> well, that is an excellent segue. I mean, you just moving right along here. <laughs> um, that is an excellent segue for us to talk about. So, what are you doing now? You have been raised by you know this hard mom stop putting in quotes <laughs> stop putting in quotes that's a definite <laughs> yes <laughs> she was hard i don't think nobody else can handle it <laughs> she allowed that you know less on my brother because he's a boy no that's not true that's that's going to be a whole that's going to be another lounging with me <laughs> because me and Marquise, the both of us <laughs> Oh, that'd be cute, but no, I was. It's just gonna. It was just gonna be me talking about being a hard parent because Marquis said he's yeah. happy that I was because yeah. he don't know where he would be. But right, we, I'm happy too. That's what I said. So you know, that's gonna be another thing. But um, being raised by a hard parent, having graduated college, um, 
So what is life for you now? What is life like for you now? Just starting off and you have a pandemic here. Listen. And what are you doing now that you've graduated? Okay, so now what I'm doing is, and this goes back to when I say faith and prayer. I also was praying on, you know, something just to happen in my life. And I completely forgot that I was applying to jobs that um, goes to my, that, you know, will go to my career or whatever when we came home. Because I'm like, well, shoot, I'm home now. I need to be working. So I was applying to jobs, home staging companies, this and the third. And I graduated in May, was depressed in May. Come a month later, I'm getting a phone call from a company that I'm working for now, being a staging assistant. So I worked for, I was an intern for a company last year, wasn't paid, but it was something I had to do to get through school. I had to graduate, whatever. You got to do hard stuff to get to where you're going. So that's a word. <laughs> you got <laughs> You got to do it. So, um, so yeah, they called me and I came out here and running, crying to my mom. Like, mom, oh my gosh. She's like, relax. Is this good news? Bad news? I'm like, no, it's good news. She's like, oh my gosh, you're so emotional. I'm like, I know, but it's just like, I was so sad and I didn't know what I was going to do. I was praying and stuff. And now I got a call. They offered me a, a, a full-time position <laughs> working as a staging assistant. Of course, I am not going to last long because I plan on being a property manager. But yeah, so I ended up getting that call. So now I am a home staging assistant. And also, when I was, you know, r trying to figure out what um, I wanted to do during this pandemic and stuff, before I got that call, I had started my business, Casa de Plush. Casa de Plush, simply, I put some of my um, individual staging projects for my job on there. And also, I refurbished furniture. Like, I have some pictures on it. Casa dot de dot plush. I have... <laughs> Link will be in the description. <laughs> So I have some pieces on there. Um, I refurbish furniture and I'm just like another, I know a lot of people have their own separate ways and like some people are very creative, but I am another, I'm another outlet. I'm another eye to help you bring your vision to life, your full vision to life. And yeah, I refurbish furniture. I make uh, custom mirrors. I make custom rugs and custom pillows. So um, so yeah, and I'm planning on starting a new business venture, but we ain't got to talk about that right now. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, that's, that's in the incubation stage. Yes. That's, that's still, it's, you know, it's that's fresh in the womb. Yeah, just, that's, you know, the seed that's just got simmering. planted yeah, 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 yeah. in the ground, and you know, watering that. <laughs> so, so, you know, so yes, that is currently what I'm doing and my future. Did you ask me my goals in my future life? Tell us. Oh, okay. This is all the time. <laughs> so my future goals, I don't plan on living in this state. Not at all. Um, I do want to leave something here, of course, though. So I plan on having a furniture store. I'm going to keep Casa Day Plus for all my future endeavors. My furniture store will be Casa Day Plus because it'll be very elegant, high maintenance, luxury furniture, but at affordable prices. Because, listen, I bought me a bed and... <laughs> That thing, I'm still making payments on it. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like uh, it's very elegant. It's very high maintenance. It gives queen. But it's just like, whoa. And a mattress together? Like a stack? Like a bed? Excuse me? So, <laughs> so um, yeah, I want it to be very luxury, but very affordable. Of course, while also still making my profit. I also plan on... um having my own staging, staging company. It's not a lot of black owned of those out here. Trust me. And I need to be the, not the first, cause it is some out here, but I need to be one of them very professional, very organized. So that's why I put my foot in the door with these companies. So I know what to take and I know what to, what not to do, what and what not to do when it comes to my company. And I want to do fixer uppers in the future. And that's when I will start taking my business down South and stuff because the market out there, bomb for homes we'll be living like in a palace for what we doing out here in merlin merlin is high <laughs> like <laughs> merlin is too high <laughs> so i know that i can take i can take my talents and stuff down south while fixing up these um because i watch a lot of hgtv and i also plan on being 
a black having a black on you know segment on um hctv because it's none of them either it's none of them it's one it's literally one it's one fixer upper show of, of a black couple on hctv at the moment and i plan on being another one I'm so that's right show. <laughs> don't forget about your mother <laughs> how could i i don't think you're gonna let me for I'm one not. <laughs> she's not. already planning y'all i tell her my goals and stuff she's just like i love this because i don't I'm gonna have a job. Like, <laughs> listen, guys. Like, I'm <laughs> both of my kids want their own businesses. I'm like, great. I can work for y'all. Yeah. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just work do her for thing, y'all. work at home, and try to work for us. Let's make sure we give her something to do so she can work at home. Cause let me. Tell no, y'all gonna pay me. <laughs> I'm gonna be like office manager for y'all business. Y'all gonna pay me. Hello? <laughs> I'm not working for free. <laughs> but you know. But yes, I plan on doing that, and um. This is something that I came up with recently. I want to have a nonprofit for, um, like, like you know, shelters, like kids' homes and stuff like that. Because it's like I'm just like, okay, if these kids, if I had the talent to make a home, if these kids really don't have a home, I want to do that. So yeah, it's just something to give back to the community. Because listen, if you get blessed, that's what you need to do: give back to the community. Okay, let the people know. <laughs> Tell the people what they're supposed to do. So that's what I plan on doing. Um, that's what I plan on doing in my future. You know, and you know, other little things coming along with it. You know, if I become a traveling, an international fixer upper, home stager. Let it happen, okay? I know that's so. why you open to all the blessings. <laughs> oh, I'm open to it all that God wants oh. to bestow upon you. Yes, all that's right. given me in the home field, of course. So yes. All right. Well, Shari, <laughs> you are a rock star, and mm -hmm. of course, I pat myself on the back. Hello, because I, <laughs> I raised you. <laughs> And, you know, you never cease to amaze me. I'm so proud of you. Keep reaching for mm -hmm. the stars. And don't forget about your mom. <laughs> get up to the top. <laughs> well, guys, so thank you so much for tuning in on this session of Lounging with Leet. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I will have Shari's Instagram for her Casa de Plush in the description box below. Bye, guys. Thank you.